Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to provide a general overview of several uh, variable selection procedures you can uh, choose from when you are running your multiple regression in SPSS. Now before we get started let me note that underneath the video description you will find a link to a PowerPoint and that PowerPoint is going to be providing a lot more detail than I'm going to be covering in this video. So whereas the video is mainly going to focus in on the procedural aspects of running the analysis and some cursory overview of some of the output, uh, the PowerPoint is going to give you a deeper dive when it comes to interpretation of the results. Additionally, you will find a link underneath the video description to the SPSS data file that I'm using in this presentation, so you can download that to follow along. So let's go ahead and get started, and we will consider our example. So the examples uh, that I'm going to be covering involve modeling predictors of student achievement. And specifically, the predictors include self-reported mastery goals, interest, performance goals, anxiety, and gender identification, where gender identification is dummy coded zero for identified male, one for identified as female. So what we'll uh, start off with is a forward regression. So I'm going to open up SPSS. So here it is, and uh, we've got our variables. Again, there's performance goals, there's our achievement variable, that's our dependent variable, mastery, interest, anxiety, and gender ID. So we'll start off by going to Analyze, Regression, and then we'll click on Linear, and we'll move our dependent variable achievement to the dependent box, and then we will select performance, mastery, interest, anxiety, and gender ID. We'll move them over to the independence box. Next, we need to click the drop down under method or next to method and select forward. So, this is going to be our forward regression. And then, under statistics, when we click on that tab, I'm going to go ahead and select R squared change. We could select other options, but I'm just going to leave it uh, this way for right now. So, we'll click on continue. And under the options tab right here, um, this allows you to make changes when it comes to running your analysis in terms of. Um, uh, uh, addition or removal of predictor variables depending on the uh, stepping method that you're using. So if you're using forward regression, uh, the main entry method is this p-value right here. This is a threshold for entering a predictor into um, the regression model. And then if you're using backward regression, this is a threshold for removal of predictors. And then if you're using stepwise uh, method, then it's really a combination of both of these. So I'm going to leave these on the defaults and we'll click on continue and then on OK to get our output. So you'll see uh, the first thing that we have is a box describing our analysis. You can see with forward regression basically we're entering predictor variables in separate models basically one at a time. So you can see right here in model one we've got mastery goals entered first and you'll see where it says method forward criterion probability of F to enter uh, less than or equal to 0 0.05. So basically as long as the predictors that we are entering uh, would yield um, an increment in R square that is statistically significant at a, a with a p of less than or equal to 0 0.05, then those predictors would continue to be entered. And uh, basically, the sequence uh, proceeds by entering the uh, variable that basically contributes the most first, then it uh, incorporates the variable that contributes the next largest amount to R square, and then third largest amount, and so forth. So again, with mastery, that accounted for the largest increment. You can see the R square for the model is 0.33, and this R square change right here is 0.33. Um, so you can see that just by entering mastery alone, we account for approximately 33% of the variation in achievement. The second uh, model right here, we have uh, the interest variable added next. So when we add that particular predictor, the R square goes up to 0.385, and the change in R square from model one to model two is 0 0.054. So, and the so basically, if we are adding the 0.33 and the 0 0.054, that's what gets us the 0.385 that we have right here. And we see over here this is an F test. This is a test of the increment uh, in R square. So you can see it's statistically significant. So it's meeting that threshold of 0 0.05 for entering that predictor. I'm going to scroll down a little bit uh, more 
And for the third uh, model, we have performance goals being entered. And you can see that basically it's meeting that criterion well, as well. So you can see the R square for that third model, which includes mastery goals, interest, and performance goals. The R square is 0 0.404. And the R square change from model, three, model 2 to model 3 is 0 0.02. So it's not a, a great amount of change, but you can see that the F test uh, right here, the p-value from that test is 0 0.036, thus meeting that criteria for entry of that predictor. And uh, essentially, the forward stepping process stops um, at, after the performance goal variable is entered, since neither of the other two uh, predictor variables would yield a significant increment in the r-square value. So I'll scroll down a little bit further. You can see we have our basic, our, basically our model summary tables for model one, model two, model three. We've already covered the R square values for each of those. So there's model one, two, and three right there. You've got the multiple correlations that are given for each of the models, as well as the adjusted R squares and so forth. Um, the ANOVA table that's given down here, these are basically the F tests of these models that we're describing up here in the model summary table. So you can see that model one that just incorporates the mastery variable is statistically significant. Model two, <clears throat> which incorporates mastery and interest variables right here where we're accounting for uh, approximately 38.5% of the variation that model is statistically significant. Uh, and then the third one uh, is significant as well, that one uh, incorporating all three of our predictors. One other thing to note too, as you're looking at this, you can see that with model one, the R square is that 0.33, as I've noted before, the R square change right here is 0.33. And you might be wondering what this change is actually reflecting. It's actually reflecting a change relative to a null model with no predictors. So you can think about it as, um, as our analysis is incorporating a null model, sort of a, uh, I'll just call it a, a model zero, if you will, where there's no predictors. So the R square change uh, in this case for uh, model one is going to equal the R square value for that particular model. As we scroll down a little bit further, you can see that we have our coefficients table. And so you've got the regression coefficients. There's the, our intercept and um, and so you've got our mastery variable right here. So this is our unstandardized regression slope, the standard error, our uh, standardized uh, beta coefficient right there, t value and p value that's given. So this is uh, basically covering model one right here. We have model two where interest and mastery goals are entered and then model three where our uh, mastery goals, interest, and performance goals are added. And you can see in that last model that mastery goals and interest, both of these are uh, significant and positive predictors of achievement, whereas performance goals is a negative uh, but significant predictor of achievement. You can scroll down a little bit further, and, and now we also have a table of excluded variables uh, at each step. So you can see from model one, the excluded variables, we've entered mastery. So what's excluded are the performance goals, interest, anxiety, and gender ID variables. For model two, we're excluding performance goals, anxiety, and gender ID since the interest variable is added at step two. And then at step three, you can see we're leaving out anxiety and gender ID. Um, whereas for that model we've included mastery interest and performance goals. So that's the forward uh, uh, stepwise procedure option in SPSS. If we want to go with the backward procedure, we can do that. Basically what uh, occurs with that procedure is you start with the full uh, collection of predictor variables and what you're trying to do or what the program is doing is removing non-significant contributors Con contributors to the model R square. So we'll go ahead and run that. I'm just going to go to regression linear right here and we'll, we'll go to method and we will select backward and we'll go ahead and just leave all our other options. So under statistics we're going to leave the R square change selected under options. We're going to leave um, our prob probability for entry, uh, entry of predictors and removal of predictors where they are. We'll just go ahead and click on continue right there and then OK. And so now when we're looking at uh, this box describing what's going on, you can see that for model one, all of our predictor variables are entered simultaneously. So this would be a, essentially a simultaneous multiple regression. Um, that uh, most people are familiar with. 
and so you can see where the entry method is uh, set to enter. For model two, you can see the variables removed is anxiety. So basically, uh, this right here, uh, if we remove the anxiety variable, uh, the p value um, reflecting the decrease in r square is actually going to be greater uh, than the uh, probability of f to remove of, of 0.10. So in other words, um, if that's the case, then what that's indicating is, is that when we remove the anxiety variable, there's not a significant decrease in the R square value. And so if you look um, at uh, model three right here, you can see that we're removing gender ID. Um, and again, that removal does not yield a significant uh, decrement in the R square value. So now let's look at our model summary table. So for model one, as I said before, um, what we have is the full set of predictors that are given. So you've got the gender ID, interest, performance goals, anxiety, and mastery goal variables. There's our R squared value that's given for that model is 0.412. And again, the R squared change is relative to that null model. So uh, that R squared change is gonna equal the R squared for model one. And for model two, we are now uh, eliminating the anxiety variable because the anxiety variable results in uh, the smallest decrease in R square. So you can see our predictors for that model are gender ID, interest, performance goals, and mastery goals. There's the R square value that's given. And by removing anxiety, uh, the R square decreases by 0 0.001, and that decrease is not statistically significant. So when we remove anxiety, uh, we don't have a significant decrease in predictive power. Then for the third model, um, the R squared value, after we remove gender ID, um, the R squared drops to 0 0.404, and the decrease is 0 0.007, and again, that decrease is not statistically significant. When we scroll down, look at our uh, ANOVA summary table, again, these are basically the tests um, of each of our individual models, the overall fit of each of our individual models. So this test right here for model one is a test of the R square for the, that model. Uh, this test right here is a test of the significance of um, the R square value for the second model, and then this one would be for the third model. And then as, uh, as before, we can look under the coefficients table and uh, examine the regression slopes for each of the uh, models that are being tested. So you can see in this final model, model three right here, uh, we actually ended up with exactly the same model as we had before when we ran our forward regression. It doesn't always occur that way, but it is, you know, it is possible, and certainly that's what occurred in this particular case. So again, performance goals, master goals, and interest were all significant predictors in this particular model. The last model that I'm going to show you is uh, stepwise the uh, procedure uh, using the option available in SPSS. We'll go to regression linear again and we'll use a little drop down where it says method. I'm going to click on stepwise and this is really a combination of both forward and, reg and backward regression. So if you go back and you think about that forward regression, as I'm adding in predictors at different steps, it is possible for predictors at earlier steps to become non-significant. So the stepwise approach um, sort of uh, goes back and as we're adding in, variables that become non-significant, um, variables that were entered earlier uh, that become non-significant with the addition of, um, of other variables uh, will end up being removed. So that's the stepwise approach. And if I click on OK right here, what you'll actually find um, in this particular case is that the results are exactly the same as from our forward regression. Um, so the stepping process, everything will look exactly the same. Um, it doesn't always occur that way, but in this particular instance, as we were adding in the predictors at each step, uh, none of the predictors that were added earlier on became non-significant. So, uh, but you'll see right here with our uh, box, you'll see it says stepwise criteria. It's giving the uh, probability of F to enter and probability of F to remove. So you can see we're adding in mastery goals right here, variables entered. Um, then it's, uh, for model two, we have interest entered, and then for model three, we have performance goals. But if at any step along the way, if one of the earlier uh, predictors that was entered became non-significant, then we would see variables appearing in this column right here for variables removed. 
So as we scroll down, you can see again, there's our model summary table and basically all of those results are exactly the same as what we had before when we ran our forward regression. The same goes for our, our ANOVA summary table and then our coefficients box that's given here. Okay, so that uh, pretty well wraps up this demonstration of the variable selection procedure options in SPSS. Again, I encourage you to download a copy of the PowerPoint uh, where I could provide a lot more detail on interpretation of the results. Uh, this was just sort of, again, designed to be a, a, a more general overview of these uh, procedures. So I appreciate you watching.